Revelation first. So uh, you would have noticed the title of my presentation today is Jews in Shanghai Revisited and Parallels to Canada. You may ask, as the only advisor of the Chinese Photographic Society of Toronto, why I'm not talking about photography today like what I did in previous years. Some of you might know that I have worn many different hats. And I started my career, in fact, as a journalist and researcher, so I'm very interested in this topic. I used the word revisit in the title for a special reason. I was in Shanghai last spring, but about two decades ago, as the executive director of the Chinese Cultural Center of Greater Toronto, I organized the Jews in Shanghai exhibition in Toronto. While preparing for the project, I did some research of the story by meeting with Dr. Feng Shen Ho's daughter, Manny Ho, in both Winnipeg and Toronto, and also with Dr. Huang Pang, head of the Jewish Study Center in Shanghai. I'm going to tell you that the Dr. Ho story later. Dr. Ho was the Chinese-Canadian Council General to Vienna from 1938 to 1940. And he was called Chinese Cinderella because he saved thousands of Jews by issuing visas for them to go to Shanghai to escape the Holocaust. The project titled Jews in Shanghai, The Story of Survival, it was a great learning opportunity for me. While preparing for a project, I spent my own vacation and my own money as well to do research at the former Jewish quarters in Shanghai, in the Hong Kong district, in 2001. I visited the Jewish Memorial Hall, which was one of the synagogues and talked to the 82-year-old Mr. Fa Niang Huang, who was the synagogue skipper. So you notice that's the one of the... It was surviving synagogue in Shanghai at that time, in July, it's the only surviving synagogue. And that's the synagogue skipper, uh, Mr. Wang. Well, and I had a very good conversation with him, I interviewed him. Uh, back, in, back in Toronto, I also had an interview with Leo Hadoun, the son of Salas Aaron Hadoun, the wealthy Jewish businessman and the well-known public figure in Shanghai in the early 20th century. And you notice this building. This is the Shanghai Exhibition Center now. In fact, this site was the site of the Hadoun Garden. Since I'm talking about the Hadun family, I would like to briefly talk about the Jewish settlement in China before telling, telling you Dr. Dr. the whole story. Though, though a small minority, Chinese Jews have had an open presence in the country since the arrival of the first Jewish immigrants during the 8th century. Relatively isolated community of Jews developed through the Tang and Song dynasty all the way through the Qing dynasty. Most notably, the Kaifeng Jews, um, by that the Hoi Feng In the 19th and early 20th centuries, Jewish merchants around the world began to trade in Chinese ports particularly in the commercial centers of Hong Kong, Shanghai, and Harbin. Harbin. Why Harbin? Because it's close to the Trans-Siberian Railway. 
You might have learned of some of the famous Jews in China during this period of time. The Hardung family, which owns Shanghai's Hardung Garden. That's the home site of the Hardung Garden. Sellers Aaron Hardung used his influence and positions in both the Shanghai International Settlement and Shanghai French Connection to buy up this large piece of land to build the residence in 1904. Yeah, that's a huge piece of land. Hartung Garden was for a long time Shanghai's largest and most elaborate type of garden. When you look at this picture, the large log building of the Peace Hotel, this, this is the Peace Hotel, an old picture of the Peace Hotel, a picture of the Peace Hotel nowadays, is called Sasun House. The building was built by Sir Victor Sassoon of the Sassoon family, which built a Shanghai business and real estate empire in the early 20th centuries. Victor was a British Sephardic Jew of Iraqi origin, educated at Cambridge University. His family managed extensive business holdings in Hong Kong, Shanghai, and Calcutta. Sassoon House was the first high-rise building built by Victor Sassoon and one of the first skyscrapers in the East Hemisphere. It was completed in 1929. For those, for those of you who came from Hong Kong, you must know the Kaduri family. The Kaduri family is the wealthy British family. They are Jews from Vietnam. For those Chinese who know what they say, they call Patas. From the mid 18th century, they were established in Mumbai, become a wife of the wealthiest family in Asia. Their businesses were subsequently centered in Shanghai from the mid 19th century and then in Hong Kong from 1949 onwards. Also in the first half of the 20th century, thousands of Jews, uh, Jewish refugees escaping from the 1917 Russian Revolution arrived in China. This was the second wave of the Jewish migration to Shanghai. Shanghai boomed, Shanghai boomed in the 1920s and in the Jewish communities. They play an active and important role in the development of Shanghai. Now it comes to Dr. Feng Zhen Ho's father. While the Nazis were persecuting and slaughtering Jews in Europe, some people who justice stood up boldly to rescue the Jewish victims of the Nazi terror. Especially after 1938, almost whole all the countries closed their doors to the, to the desperate Jews. Shanghai provide a safe haven and every possible relief for them. You notice that this event the night of the Brooklyn Dock. And the over 200 synagogues were destroyed and 30,000 Austrian and Austrian German Jews were sent to come into the camp. So for things like that, for the war, for the prosecution, you know, it happened just so fast. And that's what it said here. At every step, somebody fell down and ceased to suffer. The time. Chinese dip diplomat. At that time, there's a Chinese diplomat who's the Council General of the uh, Republic of China, not People's Republic, was at that time the People's Republic has not been, uh, was not established yet. Dr. Feng Chen Ho was the Council General and he stationed in Vienna. He risked his life and career to save thousands of Austrian Jews 
by issuing some visas to Shanghai. When all the countries, all the major cities in the world, including London, New York, and all these statistics, big cities, they all close the door for the uh, uh, Australian Jews. So by the outbreak of World War II, nearly 70% 70, 70 of the 185,000 Jews in Austria and about 200,000 of them end up in Shanghai, you know, that's the Shanghai at that time. And uh, among them, of course, you know, uh, I met Eric, uh, this Russian Jew, uh, he lived in Toronto, in fact, uh, for some time, but he passed away now. So, he obtained visa. He was one of the Jews who obtained visa from the, from the home. And uh, if you go to the Jewish refugee museum in Shanghai, in the area, you will notice there's a small plaque, you know, with the 